One of Lovecraft's strangest but most commonly used creations are the so-called Old Ones. They show up in several of his stories, most notably at the Mountains of Madness, where they're kind of the star of the show. They're also briefly seen in Dreams in the Witch House and The Shadow Out of Time. First, a bit of terminology. Lovecraft usually referred to these creatures as the Old Ones. However, the term Old Ones also applies to other beings. For instance, in the Dunwich Horror, a passage in the Necronomicon refers to the Old Ones, but these are plainly not the things from the Mountains of Madness. In Dunwich Horror, Old One is kind of a generic term for mighty beings from outside. Plus, even Cthulhu himself is considered to be a great Old One, and he has almost nothing in common with the beings I plan to talk about here. So, 1980, I decided to call these things Elder Things in the game Call of Cthulhu, and that term is also used for them, but Elder Things has the advantage that it's only used for these creatures. The real problem is that Lovecraft never gave this species a real name. So in this talk, I'll usually call them Elder Things, but occasionally Old Ones. So let's get on with it. What are the Old Ones? They are an alien species. They arrived on Earth a long, long time ago. They take credit for starting all Earth life, but I'm not sure this is actually true. I suspect there was already life on Earth when the Old Ones arrived. If you go back into paleontology, we find that before the Cambrian explosion, there was a little understood radiation of creatures now known as the Ediacarans. The Ediacarans were quite different from later life forms. They appeared to have grown kind of like plants, even though they were animals. They were passive beings, partly filled with sand, and apparently there was no predators among them. At least one paleontologist has compared their existence to the Garden of Eden. When the first predators appeared, the Ediacarans vanished quickly, and these predators, I believe, were created by the Elder Things. According to Lovecraft, when the Elder Things ar first arrived, there was no competing life. The Elder Things proceeded to forge their most awful creation, the Shoggoth. Now, the Shoggoth is designed as a multi-purpose work machine. Shoggoths were given sufficient intelligence to learn many tasks, and their bodies were able to form organs at need. But the Shoggoths, as well as the Elder Things, had one deep-set flaw. Their genetic code was based on DNA. This means that the Shoggoths could evolve, and in fact, would evolve over time. The Elder Things, too, though they managed to keep their own evolutionary tendencies under check by constant diligence, and even internal wars between different strains. You see, some scientists have said that once we get intelligence, evolution doesn't work on us anymore. Well, of course, this isn't true. It still works on us, but it certainly will work differently. And you can imagine race-based wars such as we had in World War II, for example, in which there's attempts to uh, ensure one race dominant. This is the kind of thing you'd have with the old ones trying to maintain the genetic purity. If you want to know more about Shoggoths, check out this. The first very, actually the very first video I ever published. Now, for our purposes, it's more interesting to learn that broken off bits or mutants of the original Shoggoth became protists, amoebas, flagellates, other microorganisms, other things became animals, even plants. At first, there was probably no distinguishing between the animals and plants. The elder things themselves are said to be partly animal, partly plant. But as the elder things lived in their civilization, fought their wars, developed their sciences, Earth life became to evolve and prosper. As Earth became a more tempting target, now filled with a variety of life, other beings from outside invaded the star spawn, as we know from Great Cthulhu. The flying polyps, who very nearly destroyed all Earth life and probably reduced the Elder Things civilization to a much smaller state. And finally, the fungi from Yaga, though these came pretty late in the succession of, of beings. Also, just after the flying polyps came a naturally involved Earth species, which eventually dominated the whole planet after it was possessed by the Ithian mines. There was other lesser intelligent races like the Serpent Men, and no doubt other invaders which didn't manage to establish a permanent base. Anyway, the poor Elder Things had planned to have their very own world where they could do whatever they want in peace and quiet, and now there's all these competing forces. Ultimately, when the pressure got too much, the Elder Things were forced back to the Antarctic and discovered that during the long course of evolution, they'd lost their power of flying through space. Now they were stuck on Earth. I imagine they were trying to figure out some way to regain space flight, but before they succeeded, their own Shoggoths rebelled for the last time and wiped out the vestiges of the old ones. As far as we know, only a few hibernating examples of this species were left. Now, this only happened a few thousand years ago during the Ice Ages, 
But this extinction only applies to Earth. There's no reason to suppose that the old ones are still out there in space. In fact, in Dreams in the Witch House, a planet inhabited by them is visited by the hero. In fact, in my soon-to-come game Hyperspace, I include the old ones as one of the civilizations you can play based on the concept that there's active old one elder thing worlds out there. But what are they? Well, they're composed of conventional matter, like humans. They didn't come from an alien dimension or somewhere so far away the natural laws differ. They're affected by our own natural laws. I'd like to think that one side effect of this is that the famous Elder Sign probably doesn't work on them. After all, they're just other creatures, much like humanity. I see no reason why the Elder Sign would affect them any more than it would affect a dog or a pine tree or us. In fact, I'm suspicious from the name that the Elder Things themselves created the Elder Sign. Does this mean that the Elder Sign also doesn't affect Shoggoths? After all, Shoggoths are their creation. Well, I'm not sure. After all, the Elder Things would probably want the Elder Sign to work on Shoggoths as a bonus feature, so they may have incorporated some of the outside into the Shoggoths for this purpose. Of course, that's probably why the Shoggoths got too powerful and rebelled. The plan backfired because of the outside thing. Let's talk about the nature and appearance. So they have radial symmetry based on fives. Their star-shaped head has five points. On the tip of each of the points is an eye. On the valleys between the points is a stalk with a little mouth. The elder things probably can't eat very large things, so they're forced to chew them up into little pieces like an octopus does. Or maybe they just drank liquid like an arachnid. This doesn't make them non-predators, you understand. I mean, octopuses and arachnids are predators. It just affects the way they eat things. The bottom line is if you're eaten by an elder thing, you're going to be reduced to liquid or hamburger. Nothing recognizable would remain. Maybe they use Shoggoth to smash and liquefy potential prey, turn it into a jelly easier for them to eat. Now, they have a puffy star-shaped head about two feet across, and according to the Miskatonic Dissection Report, has a large five-lobed brain. Even with five esophagi going through it and its muscles and sense organs, there's enough room in this head for each of the five brain lobes to be as big or bigger than a whole human brain. Does this mean it's five times as smart as we are? Probably much smarter. We know they live for thousands of years and keep learning. The brains are not just bigger, but I'll bet they're more powerful pound for pound in the same way that a bird is as smart as a mammal with a larger brain because the bird's brain is more concentrated. I think it's that way with the elder thing too. They're not sluggish and slow moving creatures, although they might look like a sea cucumber. They're always described as active, slithering and powerful. Now the brain is connected by a neck to a large barrel shaped body with five ridges. This body is huge, six feet tall and three feet wide. Unless you draw a picture of it next to a human, you don't realize just how big it is. But these things with the head on top and the legs underneath, it would stand about nine feet or three meters tall. They'd weigh over two tons as much as a rhinoceros. The body has thick and strong tentacles attached to the middle of each ridge, and these tentacles branch and branch again like those of a basket star, giving it 125 manipulatory fingers. Now, the folds of the bodies have wings. Let's talk about their wings. Often they're shown as one pair of wings because it's hard to draw five wings, and these wings are shown to be bat-like, but they're not. The elder things don't have an internal structure or internal skeleton, they have a structure. Lovecraft says that the wings have a glandular tube-like structure. Now look at this picture of a crinoid swimming in the deep sea. This is how an elder thing would fly, not on its side with its head forward like a bird or a bat flapping two wings, but with its five wings all outstretched, each with a strong glandular strut or ridge down the middle and beating up and down as it flies. The wings would open up when it went down and then retract as it moved up. It would look incredibly alien and confusing to us. They'd probably all go into different times. Now at the bottom of the elder thing's swollen body is a stalk which opens up into five thickly muscled tentacles, each tipped with a sort of triangular web foot. Now I'm sure it can manipulate object with these tentacles, but they seem to be primarily intended as legs to screwing along the ground or the sea bottom. Oh yeah, sea bottom. The elder things can live on both land and air. There are gill slits in the side of their thick neck, which enable both. Plus, at least their ancestors could survive in space. So either they can survive without oxygen or they have some kind of rebreather technique. Now, the scientist who detect, dissected an elder thing says their skin was incredibly tough and hard to cut and that the muscles were powerful, sliding over each other in a dangerous fashion. We know that just two or three unarmed old ones were able to kill an entire base of humans and their sled dogs with just their tentacles. And we know the humans had rifles and other weapons. Now, we don't know if the humans were able to kill any of the old ones in return. Of course, if you meant an old one like in its power and glory, it 
probably would be armed. Here's a 3D model I made of a theoretical Elder Thing warrior. We gave it a star-shaped armored carapace. This was done for my upcoming game, so someday you'll be able to buy it. For now, you can only admire it, though. I really like it. Well done, Kent Hamilton, the artist. We also gave it robotic leg because we thought, figured the battle armored elder thing would want to move faster than its normal legs, particularly since the armor keeps it from flying. So what do the elder things want? Well, they're one of the more benign of Lovecraft's creations. Mostly they just want to be left alone to explore their scientific, artistic, and spiritual ambitions. They keep getting interfered with by their beings, though. They even kept proto-humans as pets for a while in the Ice Age, but no doubt if a new colonizing force of Elder Things ever came to our planet, they would feel obliged to stamp us out, just like we'd get rid of an infestation of ants on the site we wanted to build a house. So yeah, they might destroy us, but without malice or hatred. Not that that, sure that's much of a comfort, but there you are. The Elder Things. Hey, you can get notifications and you subscribe and you can buy my stuff. Peace out, so to speak. Take care, all.